Hi everybody. So while I'm sitting here getting ready to edit an episode of Edit and Then where I was repairing the TS-1000s, I'm separating out the video. This is the one where TS-1000 number 3 where I had to replace the, video, the RAM with 16K and I tried to do the composite mod. So as I'm doing the video, I'm sorry, as I'm doing the editing, I'm separating out the various videos I end up with over 35 gigabytes of bad video and 21 gigabytes of good video. The bad videos are mistakes I've made where they don't make it onto the screen. I'm going to take all those bad videos and just throw them all together, all those bad takes I should say, throw them all together into one nice little random video and I'm going to give it to you right here. An hour or so of just watching me make mistakes. There's a lot of, it's not just me doing things too. I, talk, I do a lot of talking. I talk up a storm when I do stuff. So there might be some interesting information in here, some jokes, some rants. Anyways, enjoy this little snippet behind the scenes of what Millie's doing when he's working on his videos. Hi everyone. So today what I got is, I have number three of the Repair-a-thon. This is the one where we tested and the screen was fine, the keyboard's fine, and it had a newer version of the ULA in it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to upgrade the memory in this one to start with. I may put the composite mod in this one also. This is the one I was going to make stock, but I decided, you know what, there's probably millions of stock TS-1000s out there. I want to make a non-stock. So I'm going to put the memory upgrade in here. I can put the 32K RAM chip in, but only have 16K available. Uh, if I want to do the composite mod, I may have to swap out this ULA out of Frankenpooter, the bad one. I may do that if it's in a socket, this one is. The reason why I'm doing the memory upgrade on this one is, if I open this up, you can see. Uh, it always kind of scares me when these around because of the memory. The reason I want to do the memory upgrade in this one is it already has the socket in here that need that's needed for the memory upgrade. I don't have to remove a small socket and put a big one in. It's got the full socket in here, which is what? What was that? That 28 pin socket. So I can do that. Everything else is socketed in here except for the ROM, but I'm not concerned about the ROM. We're not changing that yet, though I do want to change some ROMs later, but right now I'm going to leave that ROM alone. So I ordered some memory on eBay. I ordered four RAM chips. The reason why I'm holding this big box here, just so you can see, is I ordered four RAM chips. This is how big a RAM chip is. It was $20 for them. Four 32K static RAM chips. I ordered them. Eh, $5 a piece. I'm okay with that. I got this box. What is this box? I opened it up. It was full of packing paper, which is no longer there, but full of packing paper. And I had to rip open the packing paper to find that. In that big old box, we have that. Yeah. Wasteful packaging. Very wasteful. Now, I tested these with my EEPROM programmer, my TO866 Plus. And I'll, I'll put a little screenshot testing just to show you how the testing works on these. Because it's fascinating to know that you can actually test these. To do what I'm going to do here, I'm going to follow these instructions. I'll put this link down below in the description. I'll also put a link to the eBay sale in case you want to see if that one's still there, if that one's still not there, because he was selling a lot of them, and they're, they're all, he says they're brand new. I don't see that they've ever been used. They tested out great. The tube is a little smoke damage. Don't smell like smoke. So I'll put a link in that also. And this is the one we're going to do. We're just going to do the first one that just has 16K. I might come back later and do the get the other 16K in. But for right now, I just want to do this one because all this one requires is you take the chip, you put it in, you bend some wires up, you add some soldering, and you're done. So to do that first, I need to remove the keyboard membrane because I don't want to sit here and pull it around. So there, get that out of the way. there. We're going to be replacing this chip here. I got my little chip puller I made out of a small little screwdriver. This is a 2K chip. We're going to remove. You put a 32K chip in place. 
Now what I'll do is I'll get the... I'm being ginger. I don't want to bend anything. Or not being ginger. Going gingerly, not being ginger. It's not like I got red hair. I ain't got no hair, obviously. This always irritates me. Ooh, ooh, that needs to be soldered on. I was going to say this always irritates me because it's in the way. But that needs to be soldered on. So it's, we call that. Remember that. So what we're going to do is we will be putting one of these chips in there. This has very detailed instructions on how to go about doing this. If you look at the chip, there is a little notch on the top. It conforms to that notch there. If you study these instructions, it shows you which ones you need to bend up. You can read about them here, but I'm just going to look here. So holding it there, I'm going to be bending up A14, and we'll set that down. I'm going to get my tweezers. Bold ass Tommy tweezers. There he is. Bold ass stuff. No, I can't speak Spanish. Well, I can speak maybe a hundred words if I'm lucky. I grew up in San Diego, so I had to learn to speak some Spanish to survive. All right, so we're gonna bend up these chips. And the reason we're bending these up, as it says in the instructions, we're bending these up so that we can then solder some wires to them. So we're bending up A14 and A12, that's these first two on the left-hand side of the notch. See, I'm covering it up, but you can see that I'm bending those up there. Then we're going to bend up 5 volt. Where's 5 volt going to? Hmm. You want to go careful with these. You don't want to break them off because then you kind of like ruin them. Though I've seen people solder things back to put in place on them. My solder skills, I don't believe, are that good. I could probably get it to stick. Now i got to come down here. So I'm at. One, two, three, four, five, sixth one down. One, two, three, four, five, sixth one down. That's A11. Well, it's not, it's not pin 11, it's A11, the address line. And I need to bend up pin. The next one is zero volts, this one right here, which is A10. So there. Now what this is doing, as it ex explained in here, is you are rewiring some of the higher address bits and connecting them up to the lines here so that, see this, this sock is only set up to handle 2K. You want to do 16K, so you have to handle the higher address bits from, what is it, from A10 up. You got to access them because those were toggling the higher memory locations. So you end up bending these up here and you run into the lines on the board. So there we go, we got those bent up, and now it's just taking, put this in the chip, well, we'll put this in the socket where it goes. If you ever notice that sometimes when I'm working on things, I will bend my head down and I'll look over top of my glasses. I, close up here, my glasses just don't cut it. I have two different versions of glasses. I have a bifocal, I have a non-bifocal here. But even the non-bifocal, which is the close range, I get within a foot and a half and things get a little blurry and sometimes it's just better to take the glasses off and go free. So, there we go. Now we have that there. And I'm going to pause the video and chase down some wire, turn my starting iron on, and we'll go from there. Alright, so I went and chased down the parts I needed, the wiring and stuff. I also printed out an actual copy of the pinouts for the RAM chip because this one doesn't actually tell you the numbers, so you have to count down. This one shows me the numbers, so it just makes it a little easier. Now what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to start adding some soldering and some wiring to things. Uh, some of my pen here. I'm going to mark off where I'm going so far. I'm all the way down to here now, so all those have been taken care of. So first thing I need to is connect pin 1 to ground. So I'm going to go from pin 1 here to
to pin 14 there. I got to connect those together. Fascinating that it's got to do it that way. All right, so. What's the easiest way to do that? Is there a ground out here? They don't actually show a picture of how they set it up in there, so I have to chase things down. But where is the ground in that one? So IC4, pin 1 to pin 14 of IC4. This is pin 14 down here. So I gotta actually tack that one to that one. Alright, so let's tack that one and that one. Let's get some wiring. For my wires, I, I have some old ribbing cable that I use. It seems to work out pretty good. The multiple colors and stuff is nice. So, uh, about that far. <laughs> Trim that up there. I don't know if you can hear the water running in the background. I actually got the heater on today. Here we are. Towards the end of April and it's cold. I don't like it. So we got that, let's twist the ends just to try to stop them from fraying all over the place. Get a little flux on the wires. Get a little flux on that. Get the magic smoke. Give my solder up here. Here we go. Now. Hey. You spread out. Don't spread out. Just tin these wires. Try if they stay together. Then we come over here. Remove the glasses so I can get close up in here. Sorry to see my bald head. As I've mentioned in many videos before, I am not the perfect solderer, but I do my best. You know, actually, I probably could have soldered that one outside of the case, but let's just see what I can do. A little bit on there. Alright, so that one's done. See, we pin connected pin 14 to that one. And I can always just take the wire down there. I'll clean this up later. So that one's done. Next one, pin 2, has to go to cathode of D3. Good. Which is the cathode? Where is D3? Let's find out. Where'd you go, D3? At least everything is marked in here. So you just gotta find it. Where is D3? Don't they start D3? I saw D9. D3, I know you're probably at home. It's right there, man. It's in your face. Oh, that's right. It's these. Duh. I forgot to go to these. Okay, so I just got to find out. Which one is D3, though? What kind of like? Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Let me see. I'm gonna give me another board here. I grabbed Frankenpooter because he removed all of those connectors. So maybe I can see which one. See, yeah, see? See how this is covering it up? It's covering up the numbers. I can't see what they are. Now I can. And they number from this way over. So now I know which one it goes. All right, so we're going to go pin two, which is that pin right there, has to go to diode number three. And cathode means that side. Only because I saw the picture, not because I am like super smart. I just saw the picture and I know it connects on that side. So, another piece of wires. And we'll go the same length. All right. I used to use a cigarette lighter to melt the plastic off the ends of wires. And 
I don't anymore for two reasons. One, because I really don't know what that melted plastic is doing when you breathe it in. And two, it's been 11 years next month that I haven't smoked and I don't need any more temptation. Not that I've ever been tempted to smoke again, but you know, I just don't need the temptation. So let's solder this one on. Get on that solder. Alright, you're good. Then we're going to dye our thread. I'm going to put some. Ooh. Make sure we ain't got no wires floating around here. I don't like this solder. I had some better solder. I'm going to have to give him some more of that thin stuff. This stuff likes to leave crud behind. Hey, get back there. Back on Dio 3, we boy. Dio 3. Alright, so that one is now on diode 3. Set that one to the side. Then we're going to go pin 22, which is that one right there. Let's see, pin 22 is the G, which is A10. Pin 22 with ground. Uh, you know what? I just noticed something. Note, bend up, don't bend up, bend up, don't bend up, don't bend up, bend up, bend up. Note, bend up, don't bend up, bend up, don't bend up, bend up, don't bend, or don't bend up, don't bend up, bend up. Wrong one. I bent the wrong one up. See, you have to double check yourself, Millie. At least I got the notch going the right way. Got that going for me. You know, in a way, it might have been easier, maybe on the next ones, to actually solder these on outside the case. Though the, 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 having the motherboard there does make it easier to hold them. Where'd you go, tweezers? Let's make sure I bend the right one up. The one I had bent up was ground, and I'm not going to hook ground up to an address line because I don't think that will work. No way. So those have been bent back up. Let's reseat this back in here. Make sure it's in good and tight. Nobody's touching. All right. So the next one we're doing is connect pin 22 with ground. Pin 22 is that one right there. Zero V, zero V. Okay, so I'm going to connect pin 22 with ground, which is pin... Oh, just say with ground. So i got to find out which one's ground. Where do you want me to go? Where's ground at? I can find... I know this is ground over here. I definitely know that's ground. i got to find ground. Where is ground? Where is ground? Ground is over here. So i got to find ground. Where is a ground on here? Way out here, these things, these, all these masks out here usually are ground too. Alright, I'm going to pause for a second, I'm going to find ground. <laughs> Alright, so I did some testing and I found that this pin right here is ground. The way I did my testing is I took my continuity meter and you're like, Look at the schematics, Millie, look at the schematics. And I know this is the power here, and I know this right here should be ground. So I, this obviously is ground, this beast back here, this thing. So I put my continue meter on that, which is really easy to do when you're not filming. Well, it's right here too. So put my continue meter on that, and I touch that there, and you can see I get pot complete voltage. Anywhere else, I get complete voltage here. See? But some places when you touch, you get partial voltage, which means it's going through a circuit. Now, I went testing, looking around it, and I get complete voltage right here, too. Which means that that is ground. See? There's nothing in between it. 
So that's where my ground's going to go. So, pin 22 would ground. Let's take another wire. We'll use brown this time, because brown is dark, like the ground. See, it really don't matter what color I use. Nobody's going to see this. It's not going to see the light of day when I'm done. Other than maybe a meme where somebody says, don't do this with your computer. All right, so we get that cleaned up there. Come on. I'm not, it's not in camera, but what I'm doing is I'm cleaning the wires off so you can, and this one just wants to be difficult, and it cuts. Sometimes I do that. Okay, sometimes you gotta use your fingernails to get it off. There we go. Now, what I wanna do with this one is a little different, and that's gonna go through the circuit board. So we solder that with a good, get a nice good tin on that. Put that through the hole there, like so. See, it's at the other side there. I don't know if you can see it, but that's where it went. Make sure it stays through the hole. Take the glasses off so I can see close up. Bend it a little. Come on. I said stay there. Bend a little. Thank you. Bend a little this way. All right, now take a solder. Sticking. You want to go from the other side? I don't know, go from the other side. I don't mind. This is a lot of traces over here. I don't want to touch anything. All right. That didn't work. I bridged the solder joint. Well, you want a solder sucker up here. I bridged the solder joint. I'm not going to do that. You got away. Yeah, that worked. All right, so that worked. Yeah, I got to get better solder. This solder is just, it's got rosin in the center, and I think it's interfering with my flux. I had some of the thin solder that comes with a soldering iron, just a sample solder, and that stuff worked awesome. But now I'm having issues with this one not sticking correctly. So I think it's interfering with the flux. Straighten this pin back up. Glasses off. Give me some solder on the tip. It seems like sometimes the solder just like hardens up and it doesn't melt anymore. I don't like that. That one's done. All right, so pin 22 would ground. Got it. Pin 23. Uh, okay. I was like, wait a minute. Did I do the wrong one? Pin 23 with A11. D1. Okay, so I gotta put that one to D1. So it's gotta come over here to the first diode. 
wire and a floor. Clean up a little bit here. And as you can see, I'm doing actually doing like a non-destructive upgrade. Because all this is reversible. Just remove the wires and put the original chip back in. I haven't changed anything on the motherboard itself. Which is a good thing. So you come here, give me some solder on you. I'm going to look for D1 now. First off, let's get this wire out of the way. Go to D1. I think once I'm going around a little on me. All right, that's right up there. You come right here. Yeah, there's something about this solder that it's, it liquefies and then it hardens up and then it takes even more heat to liquefy it again. So, pin 23 has been connected to D1. Pin 26. Which is... Pin 26, which is this one right here. I now have to connect the D5. I'm sorry for the distraction. I was, I was just reading the instructions for a second. So they're, they make sense, but they're confusing in the same way. I know this is from a German website. I believe Siggy is the guy that wrote this. This guy like knows everything about the ZX81s. ZX81 in the Timex Sinclair 1000. But I think it was originally written in German and translated to English. Or written in English by someone who speaks German natively. So, the grammar is not perfect. The grammar throws you off and you got to read it three times to get the point. Right, so now I'm going to D5. Again, pass it off. Three, four, five. D5. All right, so my battery died right when I was ready to connect D5 up. So let's do that again. Mess up that thing there. Yeah. 
All right, so D5 is connected up there. Now, reading these instructions, let's clean my mess up a little bit. I'm reading these instructions. The next one says, if you want to, this is what I'm talking about, how I think it was written by someone who doesn't speak English natively. If you want to run HRG8, connect pin 27 via resistor to 10K ohms with 5 volts. That makes sense. But, they're not telling me, do I have to, what about pin 28? Now, if I read further on, I see that pin 28 does use later, so maybe that's okay. Maybe, maybe they, that was just like a throwaway. So there we go. We have that connected up there, and let's just get in here really close and look at it. Just to make sure. I want to make sure I have no solder jump crossing down here because this is where I had that bridge come down. Looks good down there. All these wires look good. They don't look perfect. I mean, this is this is not the best solder job in the world, but I mean, it's not that bad either, Bill. Really. I think we're good. Down here, nothing's crossing there. So what we're gonna do is. I will put the keyboard back together, plug her into the system, and see if we get 16K. All right, I cleaned up a little bit here. Now we're going to put the keyboard back together. Oh, I forgot. Uh, hang on, I gotta fix that. Good. Alright, before I put the keyboard back together, I forgot that I had this loose RF shield connector back here that I want to re-solder. So let's just get this back where it goes. It's hot. <laughs> Very hot. There we go. I think what it was, it's got a little spring action going there and this sitting in the case for decades caused it to finally let go. See? It's like a bow. Which I guess is how they designed it. But I guess they didn't expect it to last for 40 years last month. It's 40 year anniversary of the ZX81. ZX81. So now, let's put the keyboard back in. There are tricks to doing this and doing it correctly to where you don't damage it. Then there's the way you can damage it. What about this gets in your way when you're trying to do this? What you want to do is you want to curve this over. I, I know your, the camera angle is almost impossible for you. But you want to curve that over. Get it in and slowly wiggle it down into it without bending it. Like that. That one's in. Now this one can be the difficult one, especially if you trim them back. Because this one might be sh too short. But this one has been trimmed. So, again, we're going to curve this one in. Stop sliding away on the keyboard. Curve this one in, and then we're going to rock it back and forth and slowly try to work it down into. Yeah, 
See, that's just not doing that. Let's see. Try number two. We'll take the, this again. This is really a really bad design. But I don't think they ever expected anyone to take them apart. Now the other thing I can do is I can take this tweezers here and get in here and hold from that side. That way I'm closer in. Once you get it started in, it should go in with no issue and stay there. It's just a matter of getting it in there. We go. Got it to go in. Hopefully I didn't bend anything and hopefully I got a good contact. So we got it there. Now we have to attach the board in. And this is what always throws me as to what screws you use. So I always flip the case over and look at which ones are going through the case. It's using them. So the ones that are getting screwed down are this one here and that one here. And they use the little metal screw, the little metal colored ones. Where did my screwdriver go? My screwdriver got put in the case. So let's just put this in here. Now I could just run this computer without without closing it up, but I want to. You know, I should look just to make sure. I'm pretty sure I'm not. But I want. I just thought I should check just to make sure that my wires aren't touching anything. But yeah, they're not. I got lots of clearance between the top of that chip where the wires stick up and the case. Because that wouldn't be good for the case or good for the computer if you turn it on and. It shorts itself out. Get in the hole. Get in there. Don't be playing games now. Just get in there. Good boy. Atta boy. And then we need to put that one there. See a little springiness now. Two small ones in the front. Three big ones in the back. Keep that in mind when we put them back together. Three small screws in the front, three big screws in the back. I believe you could put a small screw in the back, but if you put a big screw in the front, I think you're going to, and that went behind the thing, I'll get it later. I think if you put a big screw in the front, it's going to go through the keyboard, and that's not a good thing. Yeah. It may not ruin it, but it ain't going to be good for it. One more screw. I'm not going to worry about the rubber feet right now. Because this is going to come back apart to get the composite mod. I just want to check and see how we're doing here. So this may turn out to be a two-part video. Where I'll do the composite mod in part two. We'll see. Channel 2, because for some reason or other, my TV loves Channel 2, doesn't like Channel 3. And where's the power? Way down here on the floor. Way down there. Give me the power. And the power supply. That's not a good sign. I've got garbage on my screen. Did I mess something up? That's not a good sign. Deer's doing bad sign. Look, I got garbage. I think I broke something. Yep. Yeah. All right. We'll go off camera and figure this one out. Alright, I had battery die on my camera, so I had to go change that. Now back to doing this. Orange goes to three.
Alright, so now, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the RF modulator can. I could just do the composite mod connecting to the two wires out here, but I'm going to actually get rid of this. I don't want it. So I got my solder sucker out, and the can's held in place with two big solder sucks right here. One here, one here. So, put my solder remover on there, hold it for a bit, get nice and hot. We'll do the other one the same way. Let's see, are we loose enough now to come out? Mm -hmm. Maybe I have to get some pressure while I'm doing that. What do you think? That might help. It's possible the solder is just reattaching. Yeah, that was what's happening. The solder was just reattaching. What little bit was left was reattaching. Ah, uh, should I remove the other three? Yeah, I'm gonna remove the other wires here too. There's four. There's three wires here. One, two, three, that connect the ULA and everything else to that. I'm just gonna unhook that right now. Now let's come back in here and put some pressure on these things. Who's holding you in place? Is it this one again? Probably is that one again. Come all the way out. One more left. All right, so we got it removed. As you can see, the ULA is out, or the ULA. The RF modulator is out. And now we can do our modification. What the modification works is, this center one right here comes from the ULA. This one, I'm not sure what it does yet. I don't know if I need to hook that one back up or not. I'll have to look and see. But this center one right here comes from the ULA. That's power. We need to hook up a little circuitry to those. So that's why I wanted to remove this because I want to see if I can build a circuitry inside here. So let's open that up. And I should be able to remove the bottom of the can too. Oh, it's got some solder on it, that's why, okay. Let's see, first off, let's see if I can get a, you out of the way, I don't need you up here. Let's see if I can get a screwdriver in between this, so I can get some pressure going, priming, and then come back in here with my Now it's coming out. Was still got some solder in it. Don't worry. It's hanging up. It's not holding. It's not attached to it. It's just hanging up on it. There we go. All right. There's that, and then we have these right here. They connect to this wiring. 
right there and then we have a little resistor and a bunch of stuff over here connecting to the output of that I don't want those things so I gotta remove that again I'm gonna heat this one up here Now that's unhooked. I see we're attached to the can too. Mm -hmm. You know what? I'm gonna get the nippers and we're just gonna nip it out. The cuticle cutters. I'm gonna try to leave that one in there. Can I, maybe I can just put it. Maybe, yeah, maybe. Let's just see something here. Can I just... I may have to switch soldering irons. I don't think I can use this one for what I want to do here. I might be able to get the excess off. It's kind of slowly. A little warm up hand there. I'm pretty sure this is not lead free solder from 40 years ago. I'm sorry, brain molecules, the brain cells. I'm not doing it on purpose. like me but I sit at home sometimes in the evening me and my wife sit at home and she's doing her thing and I just like surf YouTube on my TV just to see where it would take me in the past few weeks I've discovered these Pakistani and Indian repair videos or videos where they make things where they make metal, I mean, they build things out of liquid metal, or they make fans, or they make cricket bats, or everything else. But it's just been fascinating just to watch how they do things on the other side of the world. Whereas here in the United States, if we were to do that, we'd have a factory, and in that factory, we'd have all these people working, wearing safety gear and stuff. And here, these guys are sitting basically on the street. They're on a sidewalk. And we're in sandals. I'm switching to the other soldering iron, so I'm going to pause while that heats up. But they're wearing sandals, and they're in the dirt, and they're just like... I mean, I just watched one a couple days ago. Well, this heats up, I'll talk about it. A couple days ago, where they had a truck come in, and they busted the rear axle. Then you get these four guys out there with a... They jack it up with a screw jack. Get a wheelbarrow out there, drop this axle, it probably weighs 500 pounds on it, gut it, bring this big axle inside, stick it on a lathe, spin it on a lathe to cut the piece off, put a new piece on, weld it by hand. I mean, all the stuff that, yeah, anybody can do that, but here in America and probably other places in the world, we wouldn't do that. The truck came in with a broken axle, they dropped the axle, put a new one in, that broken axle would be thrown into scrap and sent overseas to get melted down and made into something else. It's like... All this fascinating lost art that we used to have, we no longer do. We're like a throwaway society. And these guys are over there sitting there in the dirt in their streets doing this. I mean, this one, these guys will make it. I don't know what they were called. They started with a G. But they have 50, 55 gallon steel drums. And they throw them on the ground and they use a chisel and a stick, not even a hammer, but a stick, to pound it to cut this drum apart flatten the metal out, jump on it by on their feet and with a 
with a um, heavy metal rod to flatten it out. Then again, they use a chisel and a stick. They cut these circles out of it, stick it on a electric motor that spins it, and then just use more sticks. They make bowls out of them that they sell. I mean, we don't do that here. It's just fascinating. I'm just killing time, as I said. I'm killing time while this thing. Eh, that was a wire. While this thing warms up, it has to get hot so I can heat this up and I'm going to pry it out. But it's not hot enough yet. I'll go ahead and pause this until it gets hot. But that was my little thing for the day. Alright, now that my soldering iron is warmed up, what I've done is I came in here and I warmed up the solder a little. Then I just take my screwdriver and pull up on it just to get it out the rest of the way. There we go. We're not keeping this. So, but I didn't destroy it, as you can see. I just unhooked it. I could still always put it back together if I had to, but I'm not going to. So, now, the last thing I need to do is I need to remove all these goodies from the can there. My screwdriver is a little magnetic, and because of that, it makes it hard to do things sometimes. Here we go. You're stuck in here. Let's just use a solder iron to get you loose. Now I need to get rid of this thing here. Alright, so the can's emptied out now. I'm going to find a strand of something here. Wire. That strand of wire don't want to come out, does it? Come here, Mr. Tweezers. Oh, there you go. That's been sticking. So the can's nice and empty now. And we need to follow these instructions. And I need to go get some parts. So let's we'll pause this and I'm going to get some parts. Alright, so now we're going to start doing some soldering and start putting things together. I need my soldering out here. I just spent a few minutes just wanted to chase down the differences. There's differences in how you do this mod on a Time of Sinclair 1000 breast with ZX81. So I just wanted to chase down the actual differences and see them and make sure I do it right. Since I'm doing a TS1000, I want to do it right. First thing I need to do is I need to add in where did you go, my little wire. Hmm. I just had a wire and it disappeared. Probably fell on the floor. Alright, well, actually, I'll take an old resistor, cut the wire off. Actually, you know what? Pause. Alright, so now we're going to put it together. I got these out here. I ordered these to work with, and I'm supposed to have 100 ohm resistors, and somehow I ordered 0.1 ohm. So they are useless. But they're not useless in that I can use the wire. I took some time. I had to do some research just to be to see the difference. Doing the mod on the Time Machine Claire 1000 is slightly different than the ZX81, and I'm glad I looked it up first. So, first thing I need to do is because this is a TS1000, is I have to add a wire in. Let's see where it says FR3, which I'm assuming is French 3, I don't know. And that number 3, I had to put a wire in there. Come on. Or maybe I'll try it the other way. Go from the back. There we go. I got to put a wire in there and solder that into place. Give me some solder. It's very, very hot. <laughs> the heat just traveled down the wire to my fingers. But it's in there. Alright, so that's the first thing I gotta do. 
And where is the plus five volts? I need to get plus five volts in that one too. Where is that at? The plus five volts is out here. I gotta put another wire in there. Give me another piece of that resistor. I need the plus five volts also. The first wire is the signal from the ULA, supposedly. And the second wire is gonna be the plus five volts. That one's going to go right there. Oh, my hole's a little clogged. I got to warm it up to get it to go through the hole. Let's try this again. No wonder. Okay, I see. It's not that, it's that the ends of the resistor wire got spread out when I clipped it. Okay. Alright, so we got those two wires there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my empty can. I'm going to put those two wires in. We don't want to put them. You know, they're kind of separated apart. I'll put them in right here. Put those two wires in the little socket as such. Nope, not there. Maybe here. You're doing it the hard way. There. Those lined up there. There, now that's in there. Those wires are going up to there. Take a little solder, which just attach this so that they don't come out. Alright, cans in place. Now I'm going to take my tweezers and just pull my wires through the rest of the way. And up here to where I can get to them. I'm going to try to pull the rest of the way. I just push them through. There you go. All right, so now I got those wires in there. Got a nice empty can. Now the next thing I need to do is, they say I got to remove the switch, which is right here. Can I do this without, I'm probably gonna need my solder sucker, so I will pause this while the solder sucker charges up. Alright, so the solder sucker is all warmed up. Now we're going to remove this switch here. And to do so, I just got to remove the solder from three joints and it should come out. Get out of the way, wire. That would help if I push the plunger down. I think I got it all out now. Let's see. It's still sticking in one spot. Alright, so that's out now. 
Now again, I, I should plug them both in at the same time, but I gotta unplug because I got extra lights going here. Now I'm going to plug my soldering iron back in and we will start going back together. Alright, so the soldering iron is now warmed up. And what we need to do is we need to bridge this switch here. These, that pad and that pad. We gotta bridge those two. That pad and that pad. Let me just see if I can do it with solder without having to use any wire. Because they're right next to each other. Oh yeah, don't bridge. I bridge stuff all the time when I'm soldering, but you don't want to bridge right now. Yeah, bridge it. Okay, the next thing we're doing is now we're going to start putting some tips together. This one right here is the 5 volts. That has to go to... Number three, I called it number three, and it, number three is, I, I wrote it down. I'll, I'll give you the exact diagram of how this transistor was set up outside. I have always had a hard times. I, I number things. If you can, you know, it's over here just so you can see. I number things. So number two is the center. The center goes to that one. That one goes to that one. That one goes over here through, and then we resist it over. So let's just tin some things up in here. Now, again, number three is five volts. Is the resistor has it? See the shape? There's a flat side. That's why I drew under the flat side. Number three goes to the five volts, which is that line right there. I'm blocking it on you. I know that, but you'll see it just as soon as this solder. Glasses off. Try this again. That one's there. Now the next one is, this one goes to the signal from the ULA. That actually has the video signal on it. Okay. Then the final one is this one right here. That goes to video out and it also goes to resistor. So that's video out right there. It doesn't go through the resistor. The resistor just connects to it. I guess it's just to stop it from, I don't know, floating or whatever you want to call it. So that one goes in there. I'm sticking to the original solder that's in there, so let's see if I can just re-solder this in. Alright, that's there. Now the resistor. This is where I have the issue is I ordered resistors, and I thought I ordered the right ones, and I ended up getting 0.1 ohms instead of 100 ohms. I'm not an electrician. But I do understand how they work. So what I did is I had to chase down and I got one that's pretty close. I need a 100 ohm resistor. This is a 180. Let's get close enough. It does show on the design that after you hook it up you can add different resistors if it's too bright, too dim. This is 100 ohm is like the one you start with. So Number one, that's number one. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this one here. I gotta connect it to, let's get some solder on this thing. Okay, I got that there. I gotta connect it to here, and then connect it to ground. Connect this over 
the ground. This box is nice and I got a lot of room in here. Alright, so there we go. That's the design. That's basically the exact same circuitry as there. And uh, now what I need to do is I'm going to pause this, clean my mess up here, switch my TV from RF to composite and see what we got. Alright, so now the moment of truth. I switched the television to